The Johnson Wax Program with Peter McGee and Molly. of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Who Knows? You know, I think we're all taking this business of car restrictions pretty sensibly. My friends share their cars now whenever they go out, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing, too, to learn how to take better care of our cars, make them last longer. Take the finish, for example. It collects a lot of scum and road dirt and smashed bugs that will cause definite deterioration if not removed. But removal is so easy with Johnson's Car New. The easy-to-use polish that both cleans and polishes with one application. Two jobs at once in quick time. Car New restores a car's original showroom shine. And if you want to protect that shine and make it last longer and save on car washings, you can add a coat of wax on top of the Car New, either Johnson's Auto Wax or the regular household wax. It will pay you to ask your auto supply dealer, service station, or regular wax dealer for a package of Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Aren't so bright as we join tonight. Fibber McGee and Molly. Boy, he made it. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a stack of bills. How do they ever pile up like this, Molly? Well, mostly because whenever I talk to you about them, you have something more important to do, such as looking for silly sounding places on your war map. Yeah, and I gotta get a new war map, too. <laughs> One of the most important battle areas ain't even on there. What place is it? The, pa- the place where the paper says Hitler's army is right now. In Dire Straits. <laughs> I went all over that map with a magnifying glass, and if Dire Straits is on there, I'll eat it. <laughs> Ooh, well, that isn't telling me how to pay these bills, McGee. You know, I'm really a little worried. Oh, forget it. Our credit's good every place. I'll just call up a few creditors and explain things. Give me the phone. Oh, now, McGee. Can't we make a special Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me the phone. Well, all right, here. But I'm not very proud of the fact that we have to... Hello, operator? Hello? Hello? Click, click, click. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> Hello, operator? Give me Jetson's grocery store on the corner of Merch. How are you? Uh... How's every little thing, Mert? Here it is. What's that, Mert? Your brother. The one in the Army? Intelligence, eh? Oh! Is her brother in the Army Intelligence, McGee? No, he was let out because he didn't have any. <laughs> What's that, Mert? Okay, well, thanks anyway. Say, let's run over these bills again, dearie, and maybe we won't have to stall them anyway. Huh? Yes, we will. I checked the total with my bank balance, and with all these restrictions on rubber, I don't dare write any more checks. Well, how about that bill of Kramer's drugstore? Why is that so large? Well, that was my fault, but I don't regret it. I asked the soldier to have a soda with me the other day, and he said he'd like to, but he had company. So I said, bring your company along. And he did. <laughs> and there was 112 men in it. Well, that's all right then, dearie. Now, how about this one? Come in. Uh, hello there, kids. Mind if I sit down? Why, of course not, Mr. Oldtimer. Here, here, have a chair. Hey, what's the matter with you, Oldtimer? You look as tired as a plate of last week's rice pudding. I am tired, Johnny. I'm plum tuckered. Oh. Feel like I've been drugged to a knot hole. Oh. <laughs> what have you been doing? Oh, I had to go to the state capitol for the championship marble games, daughter. Go every spring. <laughs> I had a miserable trip. Oh. Had to sit facing backwards all the way home on the train. Well, that's tough, old-timer, but there's one advantage in that. What's that, Johnny? Well, you knew where you were going, and riding backwards gave you a chance to see where you'd been. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, pretty good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. 
The way I hear it, one feller says, the other feller say, he says, it. <laughs> I hear all retail business is looking up. Is that so, says the other feller? Yeah, says the first feller. Got all the businessmen staring at the new ceilings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got to get home, kids. I'm tired. <laughs> I'll walk down the street with you, old timer. I got to make a few personal calls on people. I'll be right back, Molly. And quit worrying now. I'll fix everything. All right, McGee. But, Mr. Old Timer. Uh, what's the matter, daughter? Well, uh, if riding backwards all the way home made you so ill, uh, why didn't you ask the man across for me to change seats? Uh, I couldn't do it, daughter. Why not? Wasn't anybody sitting there. <laughs> Come on, daughter. Come on. Now, what's this all about? It's about us. We won't have to worry about bills anymore. Really? Well, who's going to shoot us? <laughs> Nobody's going to shoot us. From now on or anyway, from the first of next year on, our worries are all over. We'll have all the dough we can use. I just... McGee. Huh? Have you been running around in the hot sun without your hat on? <laughs> no, and I'm not delirious. I know what I'm talking about. I got the proof of what I say right here in my pocket, in black and white. Well, let me see it, Santa Claus. No, sir. Not while you got that sceptical altitude. <laughs> I'm going to teach you not to be so unbelieving. Where do you get a new mink coat and a diamond necklace and... Never, McGee, don't you dangle mink coats and diamonds in front of me and then snatch them away again. I ain't snatching them away. They're yours. You stuck by me through thick and thin. Yeah. <laughs> and you've been thick a lot longer than you've been thin, too. <laughs> stuck by me through thick and thin, and you deserve some nice things. You've been a good kid. <laughs> Thank you, dearie. You've been a precious little playmate yourself. Now give me my mink coat. We get hasty. We don't want to act vulgar rich all of a sudden. We've got to take this thing easy. Not me, McGee. If we're rich, I want to leap right in and wallow in it. <laughs> well, it ain't happened yet. But it's gonna. Starting next year, we're gonna take our feet off the pedals and coast. From there on, we ride the gravy train. I'm telling you, Molly... Come we... in. Oh, hello, Abigail. So nice to see you. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee. Oh, Mrs. Uppington, I believe. <laughs> Aren't you the woman who lives in that charming little cottage around the corner and up the alley? Charming little cottage? <laughs> really, Mr. McGee. I should hardly refer to a 20-room house as a cottage. Well, I wouldn't either. I'd refer to it as a monstrosity. <laughs> well, there are times, Mrs. McGee, when I'd agree with you. It is much too large for my needs. But to whom could I ever rent such an immense house? <laughs> I might be in the market myself one of these days, Uppy. You? Yes, and you needn't look at me down your long nose like I was something you forgot to send to the dry cleaner. <laughs> I'm going to be in the chip next year. <sighs> in the chip? Yes, he means we're cracking the jackpot, Abigail. Sure. We've fed the kitty all these years, and now the kitty is going to feed us. <laughs> well, you'd pardon me for being obtuse. Oh, you ain't so obtuse, Uppy. 
Only a little around the hips. And... <laughs> what with sugar bean rations, you'll soon... Excuse me, Uppy. Go on with your narrative. Well, do I gather from your somewhat idiomatic and colloquial remarks that you're about to inherit or receive in some fashion or other a flock of moolah? <laughs> moolah? Yeah, that, that's Times Square for O'Day, Molly. Oh, honey. That's it, Uppy. Ain't it great? From now on, we're going to winter at Palm Beach and summer at Lake Louise. And spring at jewelry salesman. <laughs> well, I'm simply delighted, of course, my dears, but may I ask if... Well, that is, would it be too, too inquisitive if I were to... Uh... Yes, it would, Uppy, right at this time. But you'll know sooner or later, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy Molly a mink coat <laughs> that'll make that mouth hide of yours look like a washcloth in the municipal lodging house. <laughs> some diamonds, Abigail, that we'll have to bury in the backyard on blackout night. Oh, really, really I, I hardly know what to say. <laughs> but I do hope you won't find this sudden wealth too much of a, uh, oh, shall we say, responsibility. What do you mean, responsibility? <laughs> I was referring to the inexperience of the nouveau riche. Nouveau riche. Mm-hmm. Nouveau riche. McGee, I must learn Spanish, too. It sounds so elegant. That wasn't Spanish. That was pig Latin. <laughs> that was French, Mr. McGee. I speak it quite fluently. Oh, talk some more about Abigail. It sounds wonderful. Oh, very well. Cette de foie gras, crêpe sous it, marron glacé, cloche, vite mignon, épinard avec beaucoup fromage. What's that in English? Indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> One could really do it with half of that, my dear. But allow me to congratulate you on your good fortune, Mr. McGee. Oh, thanks, Uppy. You must come over sometime and join me and Molly and Vince Astor and Bad Sutton and some of the gang for gin rummy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank you. And I do hope, Mr. McGee, that while you're enjoying this dream, your pipe doesn't do what I'm going to do. What's that? Uh, go out. <laughs> uh, goodbye. <laughs> So, she thinks this is just a pipe dream, does she? I'll show her. You know what I'm going to do first, Molly? I'm going to remodel this house. What's the matter with this house? What's the matter with it? No billiard room. No swimming pool. And I'm going to build in a bar for Uncle Dennis. Save him car fare. (laughs) Now, listen, don't start picking on Uncle Dennis. He may have some bad habits, but he's got a lot of good common horse sense. If you mean you can lead him to water, but you can't make him drink it, yeah. (laughs) Hey, how'd you like to have a nice... Hello, folks. Why, intruding? Hi, Harlow. Not a bit. Come on in. Drop a gilt chair and we'll have the second footman bring you a sign of champagne. Or, uh, no, that's not till next year, is it? <laughs> What's she talking about, Harlow? Oh, oh, she's just excited, Harlow. <laughs> but a woman with her money can be excused a little exuberant. Oh, you inherit some dough, Molly? Well, no, not exactly. But McGee says that next year we'll be lighting our perfumed cigarettes with $10 bills. I did not. Why, that'd be silly. If you're going to do foolish things like that, use $5 bills. <laughs> You've got to use a little judgment. Just where is this windfall going to fall from, Wendy? Uh, oh, another scoffer, eh? A derider. Well, you wait, Wilcox. You know what I'm going to do for you, Harlow? No, and I'm all of a Twitter, too. What are you going to do for me, you sly little rascal? <laughs> well, he's probably going to pay you that 60 cents he owed you for that cribbage game last week. I paid that. You did not? I didn't? No. Well, forget it. Sixty cents is going to look like a damn spot in the bucket. That's what I'm going to do. How'd you like to be on the board of directors of United States Steel, Harlow? I, I don't get it. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a controlling interest in U.S. Steel. You know, get to be a majority stockholder and put you in there to represent me. Make you a chairman of the board or something. Would you like that, Mr. Wilcox? No. What? what? I don't want it. Thanks, anyway. Oh, well, gee whiz, Harlow. A young fellow your age with a chance like this. I boy. don't care. I get too much kick out of selling Johnson's wife. Oh, why, when I think of the way a housewife's face lights up when she sees her floors and furniture and woodwork gleaming so beautifully with a lovely protective coat of Johnson's wax, yes, I... Yes, but what I'm... What's money in position to me? You're just trying to rob me of the satisfaction I get in protecting people's nice furniture and things. No, he isn't, Mr. Wilcox. He's only trying You're to... You're trying to make me give up the things that mean the most to me in this world? Yes. The joy in making housewives happy. Yes. The knowledge that I'm protecting homes against dust and dirt. Yes, the I... happiness I get in... Oh, oh, you can't do it. You can't do it, I tell you. Now, 
Now you see what you did, McGee? Yeah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> he's too emotional, that guy. He sold so much liquid wax, he's all bottled up himself. Well, you shouldn't spring things on people so suddenly. Uh, did you say this bonanza of ours doesn't hit us till next year, McGee? About the first of the year, I guess. Why? Well, in that case, I'll still have to make the beds for a while myself, I guess. You can straighten up the living room whilst I run up and do the bedroom. Me doing the housework. Oh, that's a laugh. A guy in my social and financial position. Why, all I'll have to do is clap my hands and there'll be 20 flunkies at the door. Oh, my gosh, has it happened already? <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, little girl. Come on in. Hmm? I says, come on in. <laughs> See, you usually tell me to beat it and scram when I tell you you're always busy doing something. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm taking things easier now, sis. A man with my responsibilities and financial cares has got to watch his health. <laughs> I want to stay in good shape. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> you call that a good shape? <laughs> You leave my shape out of this. What was it you come over here for, sis? Anyway. Well, I'm, I'm selling tickets for our school play, mister. The money goes to the Navy Relief. Oh, fine, mm -hmm. fine. Good cause, sis. What play are you putting on? Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Oh. I'm the medium-sized bear. Uh -huh. You are, huh? Hmm? I says you are, eh? I what? You're the medium-sized bear. Oh, somebody told you. <laughs> and they wouldn't let me. Gee, did I ever cry and carry on. <laughs> well, don't get artistic temperament at your age, sis. I like my ham tender, tender but not that young. <laughs> well, I get tired of always being the medium-sized bear, mister. Always in the middle, that's me. <laughs> ah, forget it, sis. Maybe Goldilocks will break her leg or something and you'll get the part after all. <laughs> hey, 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 get that look out of your eye. <laughs> Okay, mister, but I was just thinking that if a wheel should come off her tricycle or something... No, 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 no. <laughs> no dirty work, sis. And seeing that this is for the Navy relief, I'll buy some tickets. How many you got and how much are they? Fifty cents a piece and I got 18 left. I'll take them all. That's nine bucks. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. That's wonderful. <laughs> What's nine bucks to me? Now, let me see. Nine bucks. <laughs> nine bucks. <laughs> uh, look, sis, you drop around next week and collect, will you? Oh, no, you don't, mister. I gotta have the money now. My teacher says no dough, no ducat. Oh, yeah? Well, my credit is good any place. You know what they say about me and Dunn and Bradstreet? No, but if you can't pay cash, I'm done on this street. So on, mister. <laughs> Steamboat Bill. Down the Mississippi steam the whip for Will. Commanded by the pilot, Mr. Steamboat Bill. The owner gave him orders on the strict duty. We're up to beat the present record of the Robert E. Lee. Just beat up the fire, let the old smoke roll. Burn up all the cargo if we run out of coal. If we don't beat that record, Billy told the mate. Send my mail and care of Peter at the Golden Gate. Steamboat Bill, steaming down the Mississippi. Steamboat Bill, a mighty man was he. Steamboat Bill, steaming down the Mississippi. Gonna beat the record of the Robert E. Lee. On board there was a gambling man from Louisville. We tried to get a bet against the whip for Will. Billy flashed a roll that really was a bear. The boiler it exploded, blew them up in the air. The gambler said to Billy as they left the wreck. Neck and neck, but Billy said to the man, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bet another thousand dollars I go higher, 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 higher than you. Steamboat Bill tore up the Mississippi. Steamboat Bill, the tide made him swear. Steamboat Bill tore up the Mississippi. When the border blew, it got him up in the air. The wife of Mr. William was at home in bed When she received a telegram that told her Billy was dead She said to all the children, bless each honey lamb The next to papa that you have will be a railroad man Steamboat Bill, missing on the Mississippi Steamboat Bill, guard the angel band Steamboat Bill, missing on the Mississippi He's a pilot on that ferry to the promised Look what I did. 
What are you doing? What is this? A road map of ancient Gahupistan or something? <laughs> uh, this is a layout of a new estate. I'm going to build my new house on this hill here. See? What? And the stable's over there. And a nine-hole golf course here. And a good mitten court back here. You mean badminton? Not the way I play it. <laughs> and then over on this side is an 80-foot swimming pool and a landing field. And so... Now, if there was a tax on dreaming, dearie, I'd be afraid this was the nocturnal revenue man. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hi, La Trivia. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Good day, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Am I interrupting something? No, no, not at all, La Trivia. I was just doodling around with some property of mine, <laughs> laying out a new estate. Hey, do you like a Mediterranean type of house with a red tile roof, or do you prefer a French chateau type, or maybe a Kit Kat cottage? Uh, <clears throat> personally, I like a nice Charleston colonial. That's for me. Charleston colonial. Ain't that the kind with the thatched roof and the patootio running alongside the corral? <laughs> Now, dearie, a Charleston colonial is more of a gone-with-the-wind type of house with built-in juleps and a border of hound dogs. <laughs> you know, this is an odd coincidence, McGee. I'm going to build a new house myself after priorities are lifted. Really? Have you talked to an architect, Mr. Mayor? No, no, but I wrote a letter to Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, he's wonderful. Yes. He designed the Johnson Wax office building in Racine, Wisconsin. Yes, I know. Uh, do you think I'd be wrong to engage him? Oh. Oh, you'd never go wrong to get right. <laughs> what did you write like? <laughs> what? Oh, oh. <clears throat> well, I told him I was considering building a new residence and I wanted it right, so I wrote right. Now, now, I... now, wait a minute, Mr. Mayor. You're getting me all confused here. Yeah, me too. I'm in a muddle. You mean you wrote right that if Wright built your house, you knew it would be right because Wright... Will you let me tell this in my own way? Sure, certainly. Stop interrupting, McGee. Okay. Go ahead, La Trivia. You wrote right. Well, I think I wrote right. Uh, that is, I think I was right in writing right. The right is right. Oh, good heavens, you've got me talking like Abbott and Costello. Good <laughs> If he could, uh, could talk like Abbott and Costello, he could afford to build ten houses, huh? <laughs> hey, that gives me an idea. I might build a whole subdivision. The McGee Estate. Keeping kind of rifty to keep out the riffraff. And then... And, what's the matter? I'm worried. What about? Well, I didn't realize I was married to such a big shot. Such a rich and important man. And you know what I did? What'd you do? I planned on having baked beans for supper. <laughs> I'm sorry, dearie. If I'd only known that how you'd come up in the world, oh, why I... Oh, forget it, Molly. Forget it. It'll be fun to have a meal now and then like we did when we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember how we used to worry about the grocery bill? <laughs> ah, that was way back this morning, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll never have to worry again. Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hi, Wimp, old man. Well, how are you today, Mr. Wimple? Just wonderful, Mrs. McGee, under the circumstances. It was my birthday yesterday, and Sweetie Face threw a little party. Oh, well, it's good for her. Did you have any fun? No. <laughs> I was the little party. She <laughs> right out the window. When are you ever going to take my advice and start being a caveman, anyway, Wimple? Oh, I am now, Mr. McGee, really. No. Yes. Every time Sweetie Face looks at me, I cave right in. <laughs> Which is really pretty silly when I stop to think of it, though I don't dare stop to think of it because then I get more scared than ever. <laughs> well, of course, we've never met Mrs. Wimple, but from what you've told us, I simply don't see how you stand the woman. Oh, I guess you can get used to anything, Mrs. McGee. And she was so sweet before while we were engaged. My goodness, we were always holding hands. You were, eh? <laughs> yes, for months and months. In fact, she never let go till we were married. <laughs> and then only to slug me for overpaying the justice of the peace. Oh, <laughs> how much did you pay him? I don't remember, Mrs. McGee, but whatever it was, he was overpaid. <laughs> but I've got to be running along. Oh, what's the hurry, Wimp? Well, Sweetie Face went out for a bicycle ride, and I'm curious to know what happened. What did you expect to happen? I hardly know. <laughs> I guess I was pretty mischievous, but I told her to 
state had just passed a law that the white line in the middle of the road was exclusively for bicycles. <laughs> Days. Suppose she gets hit by a truck. Yes. <laughs> you know, Molly, when I start getting my money, I'm going to send that little fellow on a world cruise. Don't forget my mink coat and those diamonds of mine. No, I won't. And you know what? I think I'm going to buy myself a private trout stream, so when I want to go fishing... Now, I'll... wait a minute, McGee. Let's stop this nonsense. What nonsense? If you like trout fishing, there's no reason... I didn't mean trout fishing. I meant all this money you're supposed to get. I don't like to act like a sweetie face, but if you don't tell me what this is all about, I'll... I'll... <laughs> Gee, I bet you would, too. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. I got the whole thing right here in black and white. There. Take a gander at that. Why, this is just a newspaper headline. Sure it is, but read it. All right. It says, maximum income for Americans to be $25,000. Uh, ain't that marvelous? Imagine not making less than twenty five grand a year. <laughs> Why, with that much dough, Molly? Huh? Maximum means you can't make more than $25,000. Well, who wants to make more than $25,000? Now, look. The first thing we'll do is buy a big new car and take a trip... Oh, for goodness sakes, McGee, listen to me. Huh? This doesn't say you have to make 25000 that's just the maximum. You can make as little as you did before. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, ain't them baked beans about ready? <laughs> have one thing in common right now. We have more to do and less time to do it in. Besides war work, we've got to take a little better care of everything we have. Keep the screens mended, the car waxed, the kitchen linoleum protected against wear. But there's where you actually save time. Because with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, you can keep your linoleum floors polished and beautiful with practically no work. With glow coat, there's no rubbing or buffing. You just apply and let dry. You save work again because it's so easy to keep a glow coated floor clean and spotless still things wipe up in a jiffy with a damp cloth. You'll be interested to know that the regular use of Johnson's Glow Coat makes linoleum floor last six to ten times longer than if it were unprotected. That's something to be grateful for today, isn't it? McGee, Uncle Dennis just came home, and you know what? Yeah, but don't worry about it. I'll put him to bed. No, no, no. He's all right. He's just excited. What about? Well, he was out with a bunch of aldermen, and they liked him so much, they want to name a new street after him. Gee, honest? You mean Dennis Avenue? No. Fluid Drive. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. Bibber McGee and Molly programs are short waves each week to our troops throughout the world. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for the Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>